And I'm going to share my screen once again. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to do our final meditation for forgiveness on on uh, forgiveness for the harm caused by intoxication. <clears throat> um, as I've said before, um, uh, you, you're free to just close your eyes and let the words wash over you and get a sense of how you might use this um, practice in your own life, um, in your own time in the future. Um, if, you're, if you are going to work with real instances of harm today, then I'd su suggest keeping them small and minor, um, things that we can, we can easily or more easily deal with and putting the bigger, more uh, um, seemingly unforgivable hurts on the back burner until we built up a forgiveness muscle to the point where we can actually um, do something with it uh, and not to feel any guilt or shame or um, about doing that. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. So this is a meditation template, a template for forgiveness, and it's practice that should be broken down and undertaken over a period of sessions or sittings. And it can last weeks, it can last months, uh, and it can last years. And and it's actually because of our interactions in the world, it's an ongoing process. We're never going to be free of, of the opportunity to forgive ourselves and to forgive others. Okay, so it's the first direction of forgiveness is to um, acknowledge our, our own regret and uh, our own sorrow for causing harm to to others. Um, so we might just set the intention or recite to ourselves to ask others for forgiveness for whatever harmful things they have done. Sorry, that I have done. To ask others for forgiveness for whatever harmful things I have done. The mistakes, the failures and the wrongdoings that I have intentionally or unintentionally done with my body, with my words or with my heart. I now remember how I abandoned you through my intoxication. I now remember how I abandoned you through my addictions. I now remember how I abandoned you through my compulsions. My actions born out of my own cravings, out of my aversions, out of my fear. Actions born out of my confusion and my not knowing. But that was who I was then, not who I am now, and not who I will be in the future. You have nothing to fear from me today. For the thoughts, for the words, for the acts of abandonment that I have inflicted upon you, I'm sorry. I forgive myself for the harm that I caused you knowingly or unknowingly. I'm sorry. I forgive myself. For the sorrow that I caused you by abandoning you. I'm sorry. I forgive myself. Taking a deep breath in through the heart. And out through the heart. You might let yourself feel your sorrow, feel your regret.
as we check in with our hearts, that we might notice the feelings that are there. A resistance, a guilt, anger, conflict, shame, hatred, maybe doubt that you can do this. Maybe anxiety and worry. But maybe with practice you'll find surrender. Maybe you'll develop skillful remorse. And maybe we might find some release. What would it feel like to let go of the self-view of offender? Or the self-view of addict? Self-view of drunk, junkie, whatever negative self-identity people have placed on us or we've placed on ourselves. What would it be like to drop our personal stories and personal identities? Is it possible to let go of our guilt and our shame? The second direction of forgiveness is to forgive ourselves for all of the hurt and harm that we've inflicted on ourselves. So as we continue to breathe in and out through the heart center, we can recite silently to ourselves. I ask for and I extend forgiveness to myself for whatever harmful things I've done to myself. The mistakes, the failures and the wrongdoings that I have intentionally or unintentionally done with my body, with my words or with my heart. I now remember how I abandoned myself through intoxication. I remember how I abandoned myself through my addictions. I remember how I abandoned myself through my compulsions. I remember how I let myself down through my thoughts, through my words and through my actions. My actions born out of my own craving, out of my aversions, out of my fears. Actions born out of my confusion and my not knowing. But that was who I was then, not who I am now and not who I will be in the future. I now ask for and I extend to myself a full and heartfelt forgiveness. For the thoughts, for the words, for the acts of abandonment that I inflicted upon myself, I offer myself forgiveness. For the harm that I caused myself knowingly or unknowingly, I offer myself forgiveness. For the sorrow that I caused myself by abandoning myself, I offer myself forgiveness. For the sorrow that I caused myself, sorry. I forgive myself for not understanding and I forgive myself for the mistakes of the past. I wholeheartedly forgive myself. I forgive myself now. Breathing in and out through the heart center, let yourself feel your sorrow and regret for your actions. Check in with your heart center and note any feelings that might be there. Again, feelings of resistance or conflict, continued guilt or shame, anger for others, anger for self, hatred, particularly self-hatred, 
But maybe with this practice, maybe with seeing things differently, we can surrender to our own humanity, to our own vulnerability, to our own fragility. To be human is to crave, to crave is to be human. So maybe with this practice, you'll find some relief. And maybe with continued practice, you'll find some release. Remember that in these circumstances, we're both the perpetrator and the victim of these hurts. Mindfulness means to remember whatever needs to be remembered. Particularly remembering what is helpful, what is caring and what is wise. What would it feel like to drop our negative self identities? Okay, so the third direction of forgiveness. And as always on the third direction, you know, there may particularly be some hurt and pain here that is seemingly unforgivable. And maybe that is the case. Uh, our, our job, I suppose, our aspiration is that we'd like to develop our practice to the point one day that we'll be able to forgive everyone for everything. Um, but that's an aspiration. It's an intention. We can't do that until we are ready and willing. We can't force that. We can't fake it. So if you get, if you, I would suggest just letting the words flow over you, getting an idea of how this might work. If you do have uh, instances you want to work with, to keep them small and minor uh, and and doable, as it were. So this third direction of forgiveness that to offer forgiveness to those who've hurt or harmed us to those who've abandoned us um, so as far as i'm ready and as far as i'm able i forgive you for whatever harmful things you have done the mistakes the failures and the wrongdoings that you have committed intentionally or unintentionally with your body with your words or with your heart I now remember how you abandoned me through your intoxication. I now remember how you abandoned me through your addictions. I now remember how you abandoned me through your compulsions. Your actions born out of your cravings, out of your aversions, out of your fears. Your actions born out of your confusion and you're not knowing. But I have carried the pain and sorrow of your abandonment in my heart for too long. And now I put that pain and sorrow down. Now I set you free. Now I release you. You have nothing to hear. So you have nothing to fear from me. For the thoughts, for the words, for the acts of abandonment that you have inflicted upon me, I offer you my forgiveness. For the harm that your abandonment, abandonment has caused me, knowingly or unknowingly, I offer you my forgiveness. For the sorrow that your abandonment has caused me, I offer you my forgiveness. I forgive you now. Taking a deep breath in and out through the heart. You might let yourself feel your pain and sorrow. 
checking in with your heart center to note the feelings that are there right now resistance or conflict or renewed anger renewed hatred and of course it's possible that we may even feel guilt or shame because of someone else's action in which case we really must remember must recollect that this deserves kindness and self-forgiveness is it possible to let go of the identity of being a victim to these hurts this identity served its purpose wisely at one point but does this self-identity still serve a purpose does this self-identity still protect us does it help us or does it now hinder us remember we can forgive but we don't have to forget forgiveness is not the same as reconciliation we're not inviting people back into our lives. In undertake forgiveness, we're not forsaking justice. It's not forgive and forget. Forgiveness and justice can and should be applied together. Forgiveness is a process, not an event. And sometimes this is a gradual process that requires patience and courage and fearlessness. A gradual process that cannot be rushed or faked. When we let go of blame, shame, guilt and anger, when we move away from clinging towards letting go, we move away from aversion towards love. We move away from confusion towards wisdom. We move away from avoidable suffering towards the ending avoidable suffering when we do this we're taking another step closer to finding that perfect unshakable liberation of the heart the freedom from greed freedom from hatred freedom from delusion freedom from the five hindrances that obstruct and hide our, our path to freedom So six weeks ago, we started our journey to the heart of forgiveness. Uh, we started by asking the question, what have you got to lose? Uh, of course, this will be different for each one of us. But individually, we might be able to put down our guilt, our shame, our regrets, our anger, our ill will, our resentment, any blame and conflict. And in effect, this is exactly the same letting go of greed hatred and delusion and replacing them with contentment with friendliness and with understanding to experience forgiveness is like experiencing nirvana it is the experience of the absence of wanting things to be different the experience of the absence of ill will the experience of the absence of delusion as the thai forest monk uh, Buddha Dasa Bhikkhu says in his short booklet called uh, Nibbana or Nirvana for everyone. I mentioned it last week. Uh, it's, a, it's a very short, if, when you print it out, if you ignore the cover pages and the back pages, it's, it comes to about six sheets and it's a lovely uh, little piece of writing. Um, and in that, um, in that little pamphlet, he he, he says, <clears throat> the highest degree of realization in Buddhism, according to the Buddha, is the end of lust, the end of hatred, and the end of delusion. Nibbana or Nirvana is the coolness that remains when greed, hatred, sorry, greed, anger, fear, and delusion have ended. This coolness of the heart and peace of mind that everyone desires is the meaning of Nibbana or Nirvana. And it's uh, the way he writes about it in this piece is, is the bar's been set too high and this is available to everyone. Um, so as I say, it's a very nice little book to, if you want to go back and read it. The link's on last week's um, suggested study. 
To experience the absence of greed, hatred, and delusion, we must understand how they arise. And that's been part of the process for the last six weeks, understanding how harm arises. And one of the ways we can do this is to, is to understand and to practice forgiveness, particularly through this lens of the five universal precepts. Along with the Brahma Viharas and the universal precepts, we can use forgiveness as a practice that leads both to healing and to insight. Forgiveness means giving up all hope of a better past, but it does give hope of a better future. Remember to remember that it's not our fault. It's not personal. To be human is to crave and to crave is to be human. The Buddha called this Tanha Daso. We are, we are naturally slaves of craving. As I said previously, sati or Buddhist mindfulness is always in the service of awakening or in the service of ending suffering. Buddhist mindfulness or sati cares. Um, a response in the sense that only a wise response to any situation, to any experience, is the response of the heart and the Brahma Viharas. As the Buddha told the perplexed Kalamars in the Kalamar Sutta, once you know for yourself what is blameless and what leads to welfare and happiness, then spread a heart full of love, a heart full of compassion, a heart full of joy and a heart full of equanimity in every direction. Equally, when we can see and know greed, hatred, and delusion, or craving, aversion, confusion, we can stop being slaves to wanting things to be different. In the Buddha's own words, enraptured with lust, enraged with anger, blinded by delusion, overwhelmed with a mind ensnared, man aims at his own ruin, at the ruin of others, at the ruin of both, and he experiences mental pain and grief. But if lust, anger and delusion are given up, man aims neither at his own ruin, nor at the ruin of others, nor at the ruin of both. And he experiences no mental pain and grief. Thus is Nibbana, immediate, visible in this life, inviting, attractive and comprehensible to the wise. Remember to remember that, that in holding with great care our pain, our hurt and our disappointment in honouring our lost childhoods and broken dreams, we can skillfully leave the past behind and move forward. We can stake, take yet another step towards the ending of suffering, another step closer to finding that perfect, unshakable liberation of the heart, the freedom from greed, the freedom from hatred and the freedom from confusion. And I'll just finish today with a couple more quotes from Jeff Oliver's lovely book, Forgiveness for Everyone. He says, forgiveness is not about others, it's about yourself. The only true forgiveness is that within your own heart. Don't wait for it to come from others, for that is merely a reflection of your own forgiveness. And he ends with, or also in his book, he says, change your mind, change your life change your world. So thank you all.